Hey, welcome to The Ray Edwards Show. So glad to have you here. And this week we're gonna be talking about writing as a business. It's been interesting. I've been involved in a lot of conversations over the last week, especially the last couple of days about writing and creating information as a product to sell and then making that your business. That is the kind of business I've been in for over 15 years as a copywriter and a marketing coach and trainer online. It's fascinating to me that people discount writing as a business. They are okay with content creation. So we're thinking about when we say content creation, we're probably thinking about YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, etc. That's all good and well, content creation. But isn't writing also creating content? I just was listening to a discussion of uh, between Leo Laporte and several other people on This Week in Tech. If you don't listen to that podcast or watch the video version, which I think is even more fascinating. And they were talking about the demise of blogs and how blogs don't really exist anymore and people can't monetize blogs anymore, which is <laughs> absolutely wrong. There are plenty of blogs that still exist. And the reason blogs don't exist any longer than used to is because the people who wrote them stopped writing them. But there are plenty of people, like Maria Popoff comes to mind with her Brain Pickings blog. Check that out, Brain Pickings. It's a blog where she writes these fabulous essays about classic works of literature and classic well-known authors from over 100 years ago. And it's just such a well-thought, well-written piece every single week. And she has a massive readership and she monetizes that very nicely. Thank you. Look, when you write something, it, a book, a story, an essay, that is a product. But many people discount that as not being real writing. If I'm writing stories, literature, or if I'm writing intellectual essays, then that, that's real writing. And you can't make a living doing that. Again, completely false. I'm trying to underline for you the fact that writing is a good way to have a business. And some of you who maybe have been trying to do this for a while are saying, what are you talking about, Ray? Easy, that's easy for you to say, Ray, because you've got this big business. Don't get me wrong, I love my business. I'm grateful for it. I'm so grateful that God's given me the privilege of doing the things that I'm able to do through and with my business and how I'm able to help people and how I'm able to enjoy the process. But to be a writer who has a business, you don't have to build a business like mine. We've got an agency, we've got a writer certification program, we've got coaching programs. We I write copy individually for people every now and then, every once in a while. It's too expensive, you don't wanna hire me to do that, you wanna hire somebody else. Hire one of our certified writers, for instance. I've got these training programs, I've got a podcast, I've got books. You don't have to have all of that. I'm gonna outline for you a simple way to start a writing business that can make you the kind of money that like in a year or so, you could be living a life that my friend was talking about. A simple life where you have a home that's paid for, you have all the things you need to entertain family and friends, you can travel and go do things you love to do, and you're free of having a boss, you don't have to report in and go to work somewhere. When you write something, this is gonna blow your mind. You're not gonna sell it for 14 to $15 like you would at a bookstore. You could sell it for $100, $25 to $100 for a how-to manual. Here's a good example by Alex Hormozzi. It's called $100 Million Offers. If you are a business owner and you're trying to sell more of what you sell and get more profit margin, I really recommend you get this book. It's a great book on how to write offers that are so good people feel stupid for not buying them. But it's not a 500-page tome on marketing methods. This is how to do a specific thing well, written in simple language with simple instructions to let you do the thing well. You can write something like that. It doesn't have to be about making money. It doesn't have to be about marketing online. In fact, please God, make it about something else. Because, not because we have enough of those books. I love that stuff, but it's, it's the, like the toughest way to break into selling products online is by teaching other people to sell products online. And yet people want to do it year after year more people jump in and say, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pick the like most hyper-competitive, edgy, bloodthirsty market to compete in possible, and I'm gonna get in that one. And you might say, well, Ray, why'd you get into it? It's because this is what I've done all my life. I started in the radio broadcasting business at age 14, and that business is all about marketing and advertising. Think about it. How did the station make money? We sold ads. Somebody had to write the ads. I wrote the ads. I voiced the ads. 
The advertisers loved me because I wrote ads that got them business. And so the station loved me because I wrote ads that made the advertisers happy and brought money to the business. And then I wrote ads that promoted the station to our listeners. And I've just been able to have a great ride. I've been fortunate in, in the way I came into this business. But you can write about anything. You can write how to have a better relationship books. You can write how to have a more productive garden in your backyard books. And you might say, well, how many people will buy my novels about rock and roll vampire astronauts? Well, I just thought that up, and I think it's pretty cool. If you write those books, I'll buy them. <laughs> Seems like a fun story. My point is, the, the riches, as has been said famously so many times, the riches are in the niches. People who want rock and roll vampire astronaut stories, <laughs> they're only gonna have one person to go to, or at most a few people. I mean, even though there's lots of vampire romance novels out there now, if you look at it in the scheme of things, it started with Anne Rice, who wrote the interview with the vampire and the vampire Lestat and all those books. And she spawned a whole industry, which her most, I guess, most well-known copycat is the, the lady who wrote the um, Twilight books, which were vampire romance novels for teenagers. No diss to her. Those are super popular books. Their fans love them. There's her and there's Anne Rice and there's a hundred or a thousand other vampire romance novelists. And you know what? The fans of the genre don't think that's enough. They want more. So let's just say you want to write how-to books and you want to write how-to, maybe you want to write books on how to live off the grid. There's all kinds of little books you can write in that niche. How to produce your own electricity, how to use solar energy, how to use wind energy. There's all these little, you can see these little manuals you can write, these little sub books in this sub niche. And for the people who want that info, you can sell lots of those books for more than the typical bookstore book. And you might say, well, how to make a living doing that? Well, a lot of people do. If you publish the book yourself to Amazon, you can make a lot of money doing it. But there's a better way. Print it yourself. And charge this book, this version of the book. I got the Kindle version of this book for 99 cents, which was, if you think about it, that was the way Alex turned me from a browser into a lead who paid money for his information. And then, I thought, I want the physical version of this book. First of all, because it looks cool, because it's so freaking big, I like that. Secondly, it's got all these great illustrations in it. And third, I just want to be able to write in it, because that's what I do with books I love. So I paid $25 for this. This probably cost about three bucks to make. Let's say you pay for the shipping and manufacturing, everything, let's call it 20 bucks profit on a book. And the fact is, if he writes another book about other, even slightly more specialized information about this field, I'd be willing to pay $100. This book has been worth, this is gonna blow your mind, but this is true, I could back it up. This book has been worth over $200,000 to me in the three weeks I've had it. I'll leave you to think about why. Back to you. How do you start a writing business? How do you start making money as a writer? How do you keep it simple? Not doing all the big complex things I've been talking about that I'm doing, other people are doing. Not becoming the next Anne Rice or the next Stephen King, but how do you as a relatively unknown person, write books that people will buy and you can make money and you can make a living doing it. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to go to a bunch of seminars. You don't have to do all that, all that rigmarole. Does anybody use the word rigmarole anymore? There's three principles I want to get to. Then I want to give you some specifics on how to do this. Principle number one, words not only sell your product, words are your product. Write the words to create the video. You write the words to create the TikTok. You at least make an outline of some kind. Think of your writing as a product you're going to sell. And maybe you never make a print version. Maybe you just sell it as a PDF file that people can download. So you deliver it digitally and it costs you nothing to deliver. But words not only sell your product as sales copy, but they are your product. People buy the words you wrote to learn how to do the thing you're gonna teach them how to do. You had an idea, you said, I can write about that. You do a little research, you write up a book, or an essay or a short book or what I would call a micro book of 50 to 100 pages, which is not hard to do. Trust me, if you follow the directions I've given elsewhere about dictating your book instead of writing it, typing it out, you could write a 100 page book in a week easy. When you write and you produce a product by writing, you've created a product by writing it and you did it out of thin air at zero cost. But Ray, there's the cost of the value of your time. You didn't calculate that. Well, that's true and it's accurate, but if you don't have any money in the bank and you got nothing to do and you got no job to go to and you sit down and write for a week, it costs you nothing, my friend. The key to writing as a business is to write once and get paid many times. Dozens or hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands 
or millions of times. That's why James Patterson is an industry in and of himself. Same for J.K. Rowling, same for Anne Rice. They are multi-billion dollar industries in several of those cases because they wrote something one time and it's been reproduced and sold millions of times. There's a famous article written by, I believe it was Kevin Kelly, called A Thousand True Fans, 1,000 True Fans. And his premise was you don't need to have a huge audience or a big hit, like a multi-million dollar hit, to make a great living having people buy your writing or your art or your music or whatever you create. You just need to have a thousand what he calls true fans. And his, his premise was a true fan is somebody who buys everything you produce. You put out two or three different pieces in a year, you have a hundred dollars worth of merchandise you make available for people to buy from you. And a thousand people in the world are willing to pay you a hundred dollars each year for whatever you produce. That's one hundred thousand dollars a year. You only have a thousand true fans. In a world of eight billion people, you should be able to come up with a thousand true fans in a short period of time, I believe. Let me know if you're interested in talking about how to get more traffic to your offers. This shows you the possibilities of how much of a business you can build without having a huge mass audience. Because when we know we're writing for a customer, we're writing to solve their problem, to make them feel fulfilled, to make them feel like they got what they paid for. Thinking of it as a product that's going to be sold to a customer makes it better. Set a goal for writing, creating, a product a month. One product a month. And that might feel like a lot to you, but just pretend with me that you're going to write a product and it's going to be a how-to guide about one of many different things you're interested in or good at. Let's say you're going to write your first handbook, your how-to book, on how to simplify your house your possessions so that they don't stress you out and you can live more inexpensively, more simply, and with more joy. Let's say you're gonna write a book about that. So you sit down and you make an outline of what needs to be in that book and you start thinking about the customer you're gonna sell it to. Who is interested in simplifying their life? What kinds of problems do they have that they face that make them feel like their life is overcomplicated, that stress them out? Begin writing down the problems that they have as they would identify them that exist around their life being too complex. And so you begin to write out the things that they want and desire and feel they need from that experience of simplifying and organizing. This is key. Write the page that's gonna sell the book. So what you're writing is a sales page. Now there are plenty of guides you can get about how to write sales copy. And there's a formula you follow for writing one of these sales pages, especially if you're selling something simple like an ebook, which is what we're talking about right now. So you're gonna write a sales page that sells an ebook on how to declutter and simplify your life. And you write that sales page according to a formula. You can find a free formula on my website for doing this. Go to rayedwards.com and download our six step persuasion guide or our guide to the pastor framework, which is a guide to how to write a sales page for anything and write the sales page for your book. And you're asking yourself right now, why would I write the sales page for a book I haven't written yet? If you write the sales page first, you'll write a better book. Because again, you're thinking of the book as a product and you're thinking of the reader as a customer. And you're asking yourself what every good business person asks about any product they're going to make. What does my customer want and need as they perceive it? And you write the sales copy to that person talking to them about what they are experiencing as the problem, the pain they have in their life of clutter and complexity and how they can solve that problem by getting your book. And you talk about, here's what's in the book that's gonna help you. I'm gonna show you these nine ways to declutter. I'm gonna show you these seven ways to simplify. I'm gonna show you these five ways to afford to live a very simple lifestyle. So you're writing the sales page to this customer about all the things they most want in a product like the one you're now going to create. So month one, you write your first product. Month two, you market that product and make it available to sell. Now, I know what you're going to ask me. Who do I sell it to? I don't have an audience. How do I sell it? Again, this is not rocket science. It's not that hard to find people to sell your book to. Let's say you have some connections on social media. You start with those people. Let's say you have people that you know personally. You start with those people. You just let them know, I have a book available. You can buy it. Here's the price. Here's where you click the link to order it. Most people think I gotta have a big fancy website. No, you don't. All you need is a page that sells the book. It has a button you click that takes you to a checkout where they pay you. And then after they pay you, they're automatically taken to the page that has the link they can click on and download the book. This is very simple. You can do this with a PayPal account. 
There's other ways to do it, but I don't want to get into the complexity of that. I just want to tell you there's very simple ways to do this. So you begin building an audience. Every book you sell, you have a new person on your list who now wants to hear about any other books you've written. Because if you find a good author, what do you want to know? How many other books have they written? You create a product a month. You launch a product every other month. But you need a month or so in between creating the product to edit it, get the cover done, get the sales page set up correctly, get the links made to the payment system, get the links made to the email system, and to do some marketing. That gives you the space you need to finish all the details up before you write the next one. You promote continuously about the books you've already written to bring more people into your audience to get them to buy each book you write. You automate as much of this as possible. You can automate virtually all of it except the writing, coming up with the ideas, you can't automate that. And after year one, you're now in year two, imagine you have 12 books. Can you imagine getting to a place you can sell 25 copies a month? Yes, you can do this. There are 8 billion people on this planet. You can sell 25 books a month. If you sell your book for $50, and I've, a book like this will sell for 50 bucks because it's super specialized. The riches are in the niches. 25 books times 50 bucks, $1,250 in a month. Now the lights begin to come on. You're like, oh, really? $1,250 bucks in a month for a book? It costs me nothing to produce because I'm going to have them download it through the internet. So there's no cost. I don't have to even print the book. No, you don't. If you have 12 books and you're selling 25 of each book each month, that is $15,000 a month or $180,000 a year. That is a business. That is a better than average income. Most of that is profit. Let's say your books were all around a certain subject. Maybe the subject is growing a business and you have a, a little video course you created or you have a set of standard operating procedures for a business or you have some documents that help people do what you teach them to do, but you have this package you sell them if they wish. After they buy your book, they can spend another $100 with you to buy what's called your upsell. This guy has this book on how to write these great offers. If he had a, a fill-in-the-blanks PDF that I could just put my words in the proper fill-ins and it would generate the offer for me, I'd pay a hundred bucks for that. So think about if you're a fitness coach and you wanted to get people to follow your dietary guidelines, you could sell them access to a Google sheet. You don't even have to pay money to have this done. You do it yourself on Google for free. They, they go to the spreadsheet, they fill in their numbers, like how tall they are, how old they are. You made it, so they fill in the blanks and it generates a diet for them and a grocery list. And you sell that to them for a hundred bucks. So imagine you have that hundred dollar upsell that again, costs you nothing. You might have to pay somebody to put it together for you if you don't know spreadsheets, which I don't. I would have to pay somebody to do it. But then it costs you nothing. Every time you deliver it, it costs you nothing. But you made $100. If 10% of your people took that upsell, that's another $36,000 a year. Total income from that writing business, $216,000 a year. So there's how you can start a simple writing business with no travel required, no speaking from big stages required, no doing big webinars required, no doing live streams required. You could build a simple business where you write, you publish, you have some effort as you build your business and begin to sell, you sell a very inexpensive product and you make over $200,000 a year as a writer. You can live anywhere and do this, you can travel, you do whatever you want, live a very simple lifestyle and be free from the corporate world and free from the man. You can live your life, you can live your best life as you define it. That's one way to do it. What's stopping you from getting started? Go do it. And let me know if you have questions. Put your questions and comments below, I'd be happy to answer them for you and I'd love to hear what, what I've left out or what I've glossed over you think could use more information. I'd be happy to share it if I know it. Until then, I pray you enjoy great health and long life, that you have much prosperity and be nice. Let's be nice to each other. We need it. We all need it. Let's be nice. Live long and prosper. See you soon.